High school senior Ethan Lindenberger vaccinated against his mother's wishes in order to undergo potentially life-saving measures. It is a topic of discussion across the country. A teenager's decision to go against his anti-vax mother thrusting their family into a fiery national debate. My decision was not only the best decision for myself, but it was the best decision to protect myself and other people. 18-year-old Ethan Lindenberger's choice has captured the nation's attention as a measles outbreak in Washington state has prompted renewed calls for mandatory vaccinations. There are children and we'll decide what goes into their bodies. As well as fierce opposition from the small but vocal anti-vax community. They are stronger and more emboldened than they ever have been. False information, myth and misconception always exists in medicine. And we all fear what we don't know and we don't understand. But the reality is in medicine and science, we have to make clinical decisions and policy decisions that affect public health based on fact. Despite science confirming that vaccines are safe, Ethan's mother chose not to vaccinate her children out of fear. I am against immunizations, and I have seen throughout people that I have met, people that are close to me, that have had bad reactions to the vaccines, it scared me. But Ethan began questioning that decision. I had grown up just hearing I wasn't vaccinated because it's best for me and it's healthy and vaccines are bad. Once I began to look into the evidence and looked into what the scientific community at large has supported, you know, that's when I started to see that my situation was a little more unique. The Ohio teen turned to the online forum Reddit to see whether his peers could provide insight, writing, my parents think vaccines are some kind of government scheme. I've had countless arguments over the topic, but because of their beliefs, I've never been vaccinated for anything. God knows how I'm still alive. I thought that I'd get some good answers from people that had the similar thinking I had, and it just blew up. I definitely have received uh, messages, and I've had people contact me that are in a similar situation where they want to pursue vaccinations, and their parent or authority figure doesn't believe it's right. The post went viral, and other teens came forward, too. It does seem to be a growing trend. Just over the last few years, more and more of these teens are starting to come of age. Only a few days after the Reddit post, I definitely you know, went through that and pursued vaccinations with the public health department. My first reaction was fear that he might have a, a bad reaction to it. Despite his mother's reservations, she respected her son's choice. I think it's great that he has taken it upon himself to research and find what he feels is best for him. It is not what I agree with. Followers of the anti-vax movement refute the scientific consensus that vaccines are good for public health and believe vaccines can have serious risks, such as causing autism, a myth with its roots in a debunked and fraudulent 1998 study. The study authors retracted it. The autism experts retracted it. Really, everyone in science and medicine has accepted that we were taken down an incorrect path. Popularized by the likes of Jenny McCarthy, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and Robert De Niro, the movement has become more mainstream than ever, and public health experts say it's having an impact. What we've seen recently is a resurgence in infectious diseases that were basically eradicated. Just last month, Washington declared a state of emergency after a measles outbreak in Clark County, where 7.9 percent of children had gotten exemptions from vaccines. It can expand like wildfire. In Clark County, we've had 53 confirmed cases of measles. Five of them, we've been unable to verify their immunization status, but 47 of the 53 are unimmunized. So it's basically a vaccine-preventable disease that we're seeing in an unvaccinated population. Prior to the outbreak, Washington had been among the more permissive states when it comes to allowing parents to opt out of vaccines. One of 18, including Oregon, that allow parents to forego vaccinating their children based on personal beliefs. But lawmakers are now considering bills that would prohibit non-medical exemptions from vaccines, prompting hundreds of protesters to converge on the state's capital last week in opposition to the new bills. When you take away a person's freedom and medical choice, mandating vaccines for education, that is co coercion. Proponents of mandatory vaccinations point to California, 
where state lawmakers removed personal belief vaccine exemptions after a measles outbreak at Disneyland sickened 147 people in 2015. All right, how about I'm making peanut butter and jelly? Okay. The Crowett family was one of the driving forces behind the new legislation. We wanted to help because we knew that this would have an impact uh, on our community if more people would get vaccinated. Do you want to get some crackers out? When their son, Rhett, was two and a half, he was diagnosed with leukemia. We were in the hospital for the first time for 87 days, three and a half years of treatments. It was, I think it was 157 nights in the hospital overall, more than 50 surgeries. His immune system unable to handle vaccines like the one that prevents measles. If your immune system is not strong enough for a vaccine, then you can't get them. They can be harmful. During the 2015 outbreak, the Krawitz were shocked to learn that roughly 7% of the children at their local elementary school were not vaccinated, citing the personal belief exemption. That, quite frankly, was the risk uh, that we faced each and every day, uh, was that one of these diseases would get our son sick and he might die. Going to school would put their son's life at risk. I'm talking about the people that had what they call personal belief exemptions. They believe that they are bad, and so they chose or choose not to vaccinate their children. It's just not realistic for a parent to say, well, I'm not going to vaccinate my child. Not only is their child at risk, but other people around that child are at risk, and that becomes then a public health issue. We went up to Sacramento and lobbied for a bill, SB 277, and... It was getting kids vaccinated. The Crowett family went on a mission to prevent others from experiencing the same fear. Thank you for making sure that kids like me don't, don't get sick at school. It was a success. The new law passed with bipartisan support, eliminating exemptions due to personal beliefs. Eyes 46, nose 30, SB 277 passes. I was excited and happy. This week, Rhett celebrates five years of being cancer-free, and he has a very personal message for parents. I'd say I think that you should get your kids vaccinated for not only your kids' sake, but everybody's sake. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.